Hey guys, welcome to this video. On this video is about Finastrid and other DHT blockers to stop the hair loss progression. But I also will talk about DHT sensitivity itself and what you can do regarding it to reduce it. And uh, at the end of the video, I'm going to share my personal approach to DHT and how I have been able to keep uh, medications such as Finastrid effective for the last 15 years. And if you're new to the channel, uh, remember to subscribe. Uh, and if you are uh, new or a uh, subscriber, welcome back. And my name is Alex, and I'm previously a hair sufferer who was able to rear back my own hair, and I'm also a certified dendrochologist. So in today's video, I'm going to focus on DHT or hormone DHT. And DHT is something that is problematical if one is having androgenic alopecia or is getting too sensitive DHT. And what happens basically is that DHT attaches to the follicles and makes them to shrink, right? So basically what happens is that the follicles start to miniaturize, it becomes lighter, thinner in color and structure, and basically at some point can even disappear altogether. And this is something that has to be addressed, and there are multiple ways one can do it. And in this video, basically, I want to talk about different approaches to it. And I personally have been addressing DHT angle, like I started to address DHT angle back in 2008, with taking finasteride, and I was able to recover my hair uh, to the point where I was uh, very happy with my situation, and it did, for example, uh, work very well in my case. So basically, I had awesome results with just blocking DHD by finasteride for two first years of taking it. And here is a picture of me before. Uh, you can see a lot of diffuse thinning, and here is a picture of me two years later with full recovery. So this is what is possible if the hair loss is just caused by uh, DHT, right? And of course, if there are other factors that is causing the hair loss, uh, or online problems, such as nutritional factors, for example, then, of course, one will not be able to have this kind of results. But uh, this is just to show you guys what is possible. And when it comes to DHT, for example, like one can address it uh, directly with a pharmaceutical drug such as finasteride or dutasteride that blocks around 70 to 90% DHT on serum level. Or one can take a herb such as salpmetal, for example, that blocks around 30% of DHT. And effectiveness will kind of depend on uh, one's DHT sensitivity and also genetical factors and how aggressive actually is uh, DHT problem itself. And for example, for exa if someone is having uh, early stages of the hair loss, then blocking DHT by salpometo, uh, let's say for example, is not too DHT sensitive, just have a slight thinning, can be enough or sufficient to actually address the DHT angle and stop the further hair loss progression. But of course, if one is having a lot of uh, genetical factor, uh, a lot of uh, family history of the hair loss, and also a lot of DHT sensitivity, then blocking DHT directly with uh, pharmaceuticals such as finasteride or dutasteride or topical applications is likely uh, much more effective compared to herbs such as salpmetal. Uh, and the thing with uh, DHT is that uh, there is also a factor of uh, reducing DHT sensitivity, right? And this is basically the reason why I have been able to keep finasteride so effective for so many years, right? So, so basically what has happened is that finasteride hasn't lost effectiveness for me and I have been able to uh, basically take it for the last 15 years and it still has been able to stop the hair loss progression. And the reason for it is that I do things to address my DHT sensitivity. Right, so basically things I do, for example, personally is to um, uh, remove any possible toxic foods in my diet, for example, making sure that I don't um, do things that can uh, make too high acidity in my body, for example, like I keep my body alkanized. Uh, I make sure that I do things to strengthen my hair cycle itself, for example, workouts, uh, for example, doing things such as uh, having enough sleep, uh, managing stress levels. Uh, making sure that I don't uh, expose my, myself to, for example, environments such as smoking, for example, that could affect and cause additional problems regarding DHT sensitivity. And those things has helped me to basically keep my hair situation uh, in a state where I have been able to preserve and not see uh, miniaturization. Right, so basically my hair situation has been about the same, like compared to times when I had done some mistakes in other parts of the treatment, because my treatment is quite complex, uh, because I have to address uh, multiple variables. But in terms of the DHT angle, it is fully addressed and uh, basically by addressing uh, DHT uh, sensitivity and making sure that, for example, I have a strong hair cycle helps me to recover fast from the problems I uh, sometimes uh, have been experiencing regarding my treatment. 
And uh, this is important, right? So because you want to address not just DHT itself by blocking it, but you also want to work on your hair cycle and you also want to make sure that your uh, DHT sensitivity is as low as possible. Because even if you have a lot of genetical hair loss in your family history, uh, it still is possible to stack odds in your favor to make sure that your hair situation is not uh, getting or progressing or getting worse than it should. Because if you do things correctly, if you have a healthy lifestyle, then it is possible to uh, basically make sure that your hair stays that way and they are uh, basically not falling out. So this is something I want to share with you guys in today's video. And for you guys who are struggling with the hair loss or you need help and guidance, you can schedule a call below this video. There's a link for it. Let's talk and see what is holding you back, what you can implement right now uh, to solve your hair loss problem once and for all. Thanks for watching this video, guys. I'll see you next time. Cheers.